Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Junette. I'm an Albanian photographer based out of California. And if you follow my Instagram recently, you know that I sold my camera. The camera that got me into photography, the camera that allowed me to take some of my best photos to date, but it was time to sell it. So in other news, I needed to figure out what camera to buy next because I've been shooting film for the last two months, strictly film and that has been amazing and that has definitely changed my mind about what camera to buy next so me and my brother we decided to make a day trip out of it we drove up to la to the leica flagship store down there and we went inside to look at three cameras the leica m6 the leica mp and the leica q3 all those three cameras are cameras that i'm genuinely interested in cameras that i would generally buy so I wanted to go play with them and see what they were like. So in this video, I'm basically going to share that experience with you guys, um, what it was like to, to hold them, to, to feel them. I'll give you my opinions on all three of those cameras and to just show you, you know, what the store is like if you've never been there because we did check out the entire store and I definitely learned a lot. So one thing I wanted to mention was we were greeted and helped by one of the senior brand ambassadors, Susan or Susan, a very, very nice lady. I mean, I learned so much from her and uh, she showed me all the cameras. So you're gonna see her throughout this video and uh, I actually asked about her work and she takes some very nice photos. I'll leave her Instagram down below as well. So let's go inside and kind of look at some of these cameras. So honestly, the camera that I was probably most interested in seeing was the M6. I mean, everybody wants the M6. That's like the camera that's most talked about, even though the MP is the better, more expensive uh, camera in the lineup. And upon holding this camera, it really is true. I can see why people are inspired to shoot with this camera. It's just so minimalist. All the buttons are in the right spot. I mean, as far as like the construction goes, you can tell that this camera is gonna probably outlive you. It's so robust, it's very rigid, it's, not, it's got a nice weight. I know some people say that it's heavy. I don't think it's heavy, I think it's just the right amount of weight. It is, <laughs> it's just such a nice camera to hold. It's totally inspiring. I just wanted to sit there and, and you know, click the shutter all day. Um, I thought the aesthetics of the camera, like the, 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 that was the black paint version, very nice. I definitely think that's one of the things that stands out about Leica is it's a photographer's camera. So it makes you feel like you're holding the right tool for what you're doing. It doesn't feel like a computer. It doesn't feel like anything aside from a photographer's camera. So I can totally understand now when people say, oh yeah, this camera just makes me want to shoot. I definitely agree with that. So that's definitely not just a hype thing that's going around. It's, it's actual truth. The M6 also just makes all the right noises. I mean, the shutter just sounds, it's so like refined. It's not loud. It's not super quiet. It just has such a beautiful, beautiful click to it. I, I don't know how to describe. And what you hear in the video it is not representative of what it sounds like in real life, maybe just a bit. But when you hear it in real life, it just, it hits different on another level. Like, it sounds so good. Line up here. Uh -huh. There is a spring here, you see? Mm -hmm. You have to push your hand on the spring and then go one. The other one I wanted to see was one of the Qs, maybe the Q2. Sure, very different, right? completely yes. different camera and you want both you want this and you want the other one okay i'll show you that feels good though so after that i was like you know what let me see the the q3 that's also another camera i'm interested in i i'm not like super big on like a digital because i feel like it's probably really hard to tell a difference between let's say like a q3 photo and an a sony a7 IV photo you probably won't be able to tell the difference because the Sony is a tank and yeah, you can do a lot with those photos. Again, I feel like it's all about the sort of the feel and the user experience. 
Sony's feel more like just, you know, computers, just like machines. The ergonomics are not always the best, but the Leica Q3 actually felt pretty good in the hand. A nice heavy camera. I thought that the lens was gonna be like shorter, but it, it does protrude out a little bit. So it's not the most compact camera ever. And that's one thing you have to realize. It's not something that's gonna be like easy to just put in a very small bag. I thought the viewfinder was really clean, bright, big. It was very nice to look through. Um, I thought the back LCD screen was a nice touch. The fact that you could, uh, that it was articulating up and down. I think that was a good update that they made on the Q3. From what I can just see, you know, through the viewfinder and the back LCD is, you know, th the pictures look crisp. I don't know if the Leica look on digital is actually real. I'd have to look at it on my computer, but I've seen other videos where you can't even tell much of a difference. So um, I wasn't too impressed there. The one thing that I'm used to with Sony that I thought was kind of slow on the Leica Q3 was the autofocus. Um, just kind of like playing around with it in the store, you know, changing focus really quickly. I felt like there was like some lag to it compared to my Sony a6400, which was APS-C. I thought that autofocus was actually better than the Q3. Um, so that was one thing that kind of turned me off about the camera. I'm sure it's really good, especially on the streets, but just compared to what I'm used to and, and what I've, you know, I've also played with the a7 IV, it's not on that level. So after checking out the Q3, uh, Suzanne brought out the Leica MP, which is the flagship film camera, you know, better than the M6, uh, as she says. And honestly, I'm kind of torn. Because one thing I didn't like about the M6 was on the, uh, the the lever for the shutter. There's like a plastic piece that sort of moves. So the entire lever is not one piece, it's two. And that kind of gives you a little bit more leverage maybe and some grip uh, and some room to like move it. I don't know how I feel about that. I think that's just like a small detail. But they fixed it on the MP. The MP is just one solid lever and I, will, I really like that about it. There's also no branding on the front of the MP. It just says Leica on the top plate. There's no, nothing that says Leica on the front, um, which I find interesting because all Leicas and most Leicas have some sort of branding on the front, whether it says Leica or the red dot. I don't know if they're like, you know, listening to the, to the people who shoot them and how like a lot of people put tape on the logo so that they don't get you know mugged and whatnot it's like if you bought a rolex watch and you just you know where it says rolex on the front if you just took that off and just put it on the back of the watch and nobody if you looked at it you wouldn't be able to tell it's a rolex unless you know what a rolex looks like i personally don't care because i'm not buying the camera to show off or to show people that i have a like um buying it because it's a nice machine. So the MP, it, it just felt as good as the M6. So both you can buy today, the reissued M6 and then the MP. But I think the color combinations are slightly different. Like on the MP, if you get it in all black, the black on the top plate is like a, a gloss. And then on the M6, it looks to be like a matte. Um, I think, I don't know, I, I couldn't see the, the gloss one in person. They didn't have one, they just had the silver one. Suzanne was amazing. She really sort of taught me so much about all three cameras that I feel like I just haven't learned from any other YouTube channel. And it was so nice to go there in person and talk to somebody about these things, somebody who's super passionate about them, somebody who, who does this for a living and looks at them every day. And it was a really nice experience. So we decided to uh, basically explore the rest of the store because it was getting time to close. And we went upstairs, which is so cool that they have a gallery upstairs. So we just walked around and kind of looked at the photos that were there. And then downstairs, we headed back to check out the like sort of bookstore they have. They have different photo books and they have, you know, different people's work and such. And on the way out, I got, you know, Suzanne's Instagram and she gave us a little keychain, which I think I have right here. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but it's kind of cool. Maybe I will uh, 
put this somewhere one day when I get a Leica. I don't know. I know you guys are probably waiting for me to say that I actually bought one. <laughs> I did not buy one that day. I do not have $5,800 to buy an MP at this time. But it has really got me thinking because I, I, I was just so mesmerized after I left. I mean, I could not stop thinking about the camera and I really, really wanted one and I will get one one day. And it's just a matter of time. So yeah, I, I really just wanted to make this video to kind of share my experience um, with Leica cameras. That was my first time ever holding and seeing a Leica. Now, if anybody from Leica is watching this video and you care to loan me one of those three cameras, that would be amazing because I think I would enjoy shooting them. And like I said, one day I will purchase one. It's just a matter of time. So thank you guys for watching and I really hope you got something out of this video. You can check out my website for some presets. You can see my work and follow me on Instagram where you can see my work and basically, you know, in my stories, I kind of post my everyday life where I'm shooting, what I'm doing. For those of you that are subscribers, thank you for being patient. I'm making less videos, but trying to make them more meaningful. And for those of you that are new, please consider subscribing, like this video and stay tuned for some more film to come because I have roles in the making, roles that need to be developed, and I'm excited to share that. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see each other in the next one.